News 46, local coverage you can count on. Partners Medical Group. Our mission is to provide the highest quality of health care to each and every patient. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. Happy holidays to our wonderful friends in Pahrump and a very prosperous new year. News 46 is brought to you by Healthcare Partners and Humana. News is also brought to you by Barry Levinson and Associates, Harumph's Bankruptcy Center. When it comes to important matters like bankruptcy, call an experienced, compassionate attorney. Call the Bankruptcy Center of Harumph. Call 775-727-4747. Tonight on News 46, James Oscarson runs for the Assemblyman's seat. A sixth defendant is arrested for the Donner stabbings. And bikers deliver gifts for the Tribe Toy Drive. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell. News 46. Local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Wednesday, December 21st, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. I'm Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. Desert View Hospital's marketing director, James Oscarson, has decided to run for Assembly District 36. Deanna, we saw an opportunity. Uh, Assemblyman Goodhart has decided to move on to the Senate, so we decided to take uh, an opportunity and see how we could do with the, uh, with the Assembly race in District 36. No, he's looking for Mike McGinnis's seat that he's vacating. Right. I believe uh, Mike McGinnis has termed out, so he'll be running. I think there'll be some other uh, candidates in that race. And uh, so far, we're the first one to announce, and we're pretty happy about that and going to continue on and hopefully run a good, uh, uh, positive campaign. And tell me um, about you wanting to be in the political arena now. I've had some opportunities in the past working with the legislators in Carson City. We've had uh, some opportunities when I was with uh, one of the state licensing boards and worked with LCB and some of those folks and getting bills through. And, and it was a very interesting process. I uh, kind of got a taste and a flavor for it and got to work with the legislators significantly up there and some of the lobbyists and feel like this is a good opportunity and a good time in my life for me to uh, take advantage of, uh, of this opportunity that's presented itself. I know that you're here at Desert View Hospital. What's going to be going on with that? Uh, my employer is extremely supportive. I've had the opportunity to visit with uh, Susan DeVille, our CEO, and, and uh, Mark Stoddard, who's the uh, president of the corporation, and they both are very supportive, encourage me to do that, and, and assure me that I'll have, uh, I'll have a place when I get back from the uh, four or five months we spend at the legislature every other year. And about your opponent, do you, has anybody come forward yet? We don't have anybody that's announced yet. It's still very early, but we want to come out early and announce and starting to uh, start in our, uh, our campaigning and doing some of the things we're going to do. And a little bit about uh, what are your hopes and dreams f to bring to Assembly District 36? Well, I, I think the rurals are, uh, have been particularly hard hit in some of these economic uh, times that have happened. And I think we need to ensure that the rurals still have a say-so and have a voice in the legislature. Uh, I think the folks who uh, have been my predecessors have done a good job with that, and we're going to continue on and, and do, uh, do what we can to make sure that the services that are available here are we at least maintain them, or if not maintain them, at least try and make sure that there's a, uh, 
uh, there's some continuity of things. Obviously, I have a healthcare background. It's important to me that I uh, that I stress that. But it's not the only platform I have. I'm I'm going to work on the things that the that the people at the state level can work on, in addition to being able to work with the people in uh, in uh, state and local governments, uh, the local governments here, the county commissioners and the in the counties that I represent, and that and the town boards and those folks, to ensure that the state's doing everything they can to uh, uh, to communicate with them and, and keep in touch. It's nice to have somebody representing us from Pahrump here and to go on to be assemblyman. What are you hearing from the public right now? You know, I, everything so far has been very positive. People, uh, people that know me know that I, I listen. Uh, it's, a, it's a very steep learning curve, and I'm learning things, new things every day. Had the opportunity to meet with some of the, uh, some of the uh, assemblymen that have are, are already there and have been there a while, and they're giving me their input and their thoughts. And uh, I think the, the key is to listen to the constituents. They're the ones who put you there, and they're the ones who keep you there if they, if they like what you do. So if you listen to what they're saying, if you pay attention, you're not always going to be able to do what they want you to do, but if you pay attention and take their ideas to, to Carson City uh, and share them with your, uh, with your constituents up there and, and your fellow legislators up there, I think that's the key. What are you hearing that they're most concerned about? You know, I haven't heard one common thread, one common issue. Healthcare is always uh, something. Uh, we're talking about roads. We've talked a little bit about roads and some of those kinds of things, but really nothing other than that at this point in time. While well, Amber Maxwell was arrested in court on Monday, that now makes six defendants who have been charged with the murder and attempted murder that occurred on Donner Street. 31-year-old Amber Maxwell was arrested in court on Monday. She's the wife of Michael Maxwell Jr., along with four other defendants who have been arrested and charged with the murder and attempted murder of Michael Frazier and Antoinette Bell. The stabbing attack occurred on Donner Street on May 1st of this year. Amber Maxwell was in court attending her husband's hearing where witnesses testified against him. She was informed of the warrant and taken into custody by a bailiff. She has been charged with attempted murder, being under the influence of a controlled substance, destroying evidence, and possession of methamphetamine. She is in custody at the Nye County Detention Center and is being held on the bail amount of $50,000 cash or a $100,000 bond. The other defendants are Troy Jackson, Vicki Garcia, Tiffany Rubio, and Charles Eubanks. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 40. The rest of the suspects remain in custody. A trial is set for July 9, 2012, and Amber Maxwell is scheduled to be in Pahrump Justice Court on January 4th. All right, well, Nevada Highway Patrol has issued a press release regarding a fatal automobile accident that occurred on Friday afternoon at approximately 310. A red Ford Ranger pickup was traveling northbound on US 95 in the, in the number two travel lane approaching the Cheyenne Avenue underpass. A red and white Grove hydraulic truck crane was parked in the corner off construction of the construction area south of the Cheyenne Avenue underpass. For unknown reasons, the Ford Ranger crossed the number one travel lane, struck an orange construction barrel, and continued northbound in the corner off construction area. The front of the Ford Ranger struck the rear of the red and white truck crane. As a result of the collision, the driver of the red Ford Ranger, 27-year-old Blake Owen McGuire of Las Vegas, was pronounced deceased at the scene by the Clark County Coroner. And Washoe County District Judge Robert H. Perry passed away yesterday as a result of a lengthy illness with his family at his side. Judge Perry had been on the district court bench since being appointed in January of 2005 by then-Governor Kenny Gwynn. No funeral arrangements have been finalized. Well, Walmart held their annual shop with a cop last weekend. It was fun. It was cool to see her like, run around and just be happy and stuff. So. I had real fun. I got um, uh, a pair of high heels. I got some, uh, well, I got a uh, cool box that's all sparkly. <laughs> so she got to pick out some items. I know she said some high heels and some sparkly things. Yeah, she picked out some shoes, some makeup, and uh, a Barbie of some sort. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Have you ever done this before? No, this is my first time, actually. Do you hope to do this in the future? Oh, absolutely. It was, this was amazing. This was a fun time. So Walmart said that they sent out a whole bunch of emails and people came back very quickly um, volunteering for this. Yeah, it was, uh, it was we, we really jumped on the opportunity to help out with Pahrump and just, just help out because it's just, you know, the holiday season and it's just... You know. The officers at um, CCA seem to volunteer a lot here in the community. Yeah, we're very community driven. Uh, we like to... Uh, support the community that we're in and let them know that we're here to help them and that just be good neighbors so 
Was it great to see her face when she got to pick out the items and kind of just go crazy? Oh, absolutely. It was priceless. It, was it only just took a few minutes, though, didn't it, for her to actually spend the money? Oh, yeah. She, she, uh, she knew exactly what she wanted, so... So many things going on around Christmas time. Indeed, yes, indeed. And uh, there was some interesting stuff happening with the Trojanettes, right? And yeah, there was the Pahrump Valley High School Trojanettes. I was very excited to see this. At Disneyland last Saturday, they opened the parade on Main Street. Wow. Isn't that cool, that's the Pahrump Valley awesome. Trojanettes? So we were really proud of them. Oh, that's and great. it's one of the busiest days of the year. Actually, the Saturday before Christmas is going to be their busiest day. But yeah. it, was a, it was really beautiful. The castle's all lit up, and they have a huge tree in Main Street. Really nice. how they get picked or something like that? Is you know, I don't know, but we're definitely going to find out, and oh. we're going to bring it to you, the audience. But I just wanted to say, hey, congrats to you, all you Pahrump Valley Trojanettes. You did a great job. All right, folks. Well, coming up, boxer Floyd Mayweather has his day in court. McDonald's hosted dinner with Santa. We'll have all this and more right after the break, so please keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by... Southwest Medical Associates. Their health care center is now open in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. Welcome back to News 46. Boxer Floyd Mayweather was sentenced in court today. And our new face to KPVM, Nathan Hollenbeck, explains. Boxer Floyd Mayweather Jr. was sentenced today for 90 days in jail after pleading guilty to reduced battery, domestic violence, and harassment charges before a Las Vegas judge. Judge Melissa Saragosa also ordered the 34-year-old Mayweather to complete 100 hours of community service and pay a $2,500 fine. The plea deal avoids trial on felony allegations that he hit his ex-girlfriend and threatened two of their children during an argument at her home in September 2010. The prosecutor told the judge Mayweather has been in trouble before and hasn't been punished. Mayweather's attorney had argued that the public would benefit more if Mayweather performs 100 hours of community service with children. She says she's considering an appeal of this case for Mayweather. Mayweather was told to report to jail. January 6. This is Nathan Hollenbeck for News 46. Thank you very much, Nathan. Folks, Car Studios' Julie Hargis may be able to help you with those last-minute gift ideas. Right now, we're currently uh, doing a Wednesday special 20% off for our senior citizens. And uh, we also have a $15 outside special for cars. SUVs and trucks are slightly higher. And uh, through now, through the end of the year, which we've got a few days left, we're going to do a uh, Christmas cleanup on your insides. For $40, we will do completely the inside of your vehicle. When you're done hauling those packages and Christmas tree, come by and we can clean it up for you. That's especially great because a lot of us don't want to do that. That's right, and that's why we tried to make it special, kind of reward you after the Christmas holiday is over. Exactly. There's also going to be a food drive going on. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? We do. We've had uh, the first annual Harvest Food Festival, uh, food drive, excuse me. Um, we had that for Thanksgiving, and we were able to feed 14 families. Uh, we're continuing it through Friday, December 23rd, in a few days. Uh, we just got nine more families given to us as names. We're working in connection with the uh, Church of the Harvest. They're doing the distribution, but we're the drop-off point. So if you have any canned goods or anything like that, if you want to give a gift certificate to a family, we're trying to get the last few families fed for Christmas this year. So bring it on down here to Car Studio, located in front of the Nugget. Uh, our hours right now in the winter are uh, 9 to 4. So come on down and, and, and help. We'd really appreciate it. That would be a very great gift for people. Do you guys offer gift certificates as well? We do, Zach. Uh, we do have gift certificates available in any denomination. So if you have $5 left for a stocking stuffer, we can give you $5 off a of detail. Uh, whatever denomination, $5, $25, uh, a hundred, whatever you want to give. We had a lady that just called us and she said her kids wanted to buy a detail for us. So I told her, come on down, have them buy it and stick it in her stocking for her. And uh, we'll go ahead and get that done. So definitely, and they're good for 60 days. So they don't have to use it right away.
Come on down to Car Studio and see us. Well, kids got all dressed up on Friday to meet the big man himself, Santa, who stopped by McDonald's to have dinner with them. Guess who was here at McDonald's on Friday night? None other than the big elf himself, Santa Claus. We're going to speak to manager Michael Holder. Oh, yes. Um, tonight on Friday, we had um, Santa come actually come visit us for all the boys and girls and grown-ups alike to come get their picture taken with Santa and eat a Happy Meal and just have a good time and enjoy the atmosphere. Really great. They're taking pictures out there. Oh, yes. Um, they're all taking pictures, and um, we will be the ones providing the pictures tomorrow. So, I mean... Great time out here. Everybody's having fun and we're enjoying it. The kids are really lined up for him there with all their uh, lists all ready to go and everything. And some of them really dressed to the nines. Oh, yes. A lot of parents brought their kids all dressed up, which is awesome. You know, it's always good to have a picture with Santa. So, you know, their first Christmas. So, I mean, it's a really good big deal for us to have Santa come to Pahrump, especially at our store. So. It's a wonderful event. Tell a little bit about some of the special, some of the things coming on at McDonald's right now at this time of year. Well, we have the peppermint mocha right now, which is a really big hit. You know, we're re-hitting back the Big Mac, so, and we're getting the new cinnamon apple walnut oatmeal next week. Um, so come down and try it out. We're going to have samples, free samples going throughout the week, so come try it. I know that uh, this time of year you find yourself wanting and gravitating towards uh, the coffee drinks and the um, hot cocoa drinks, and you guys seem to have a wide array of different products there. Oh, yes. McDonald's has really done an outstanding job coming out with McCafe drinks. Um, at number one right now in, like, all kinds, ice mochas, from frappes to lattes to... God, you name it, we probably have it. <laughs> it's really true. It's really true. So um, here at McDonald's, of course, are we 24 hours here? 24. The drive-thru is 24 hours. So, yeah. What's coming up next? Any other events coming up for the holidays for New Year's? Um, well, we don't have nothing really planned yet. But, you know, like I said, if we do, you guys will be the first ones to know. Of course, come on down here for all your McCafe drinks. And, of course, try that peppermint mocha. It's fantastic here at McDonald's. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Coming up, bikers get together and hold a toy drive. And we'll have what's coming up in entertainment with Zach Fuentes when we get back. Welcome back to News 46. Bikers from all over came together for the annual Tribe Toy Drive held on Sunday. They delivered gifts to boys and girls all over Pahrump. We're going to uh, deliver toys to uh, some of the needy and some of the people that are out of work and things uh, today. I know we've been doing this for years. How many years? Since 1991. And how many riders do we have today participating? I know it's not just the tribe. Uh, we have uh, the gents. We have the Vietnam vets. We have uh, several groups coming out of uh, Las Vegas. And we have a lot of independents. Everybody's welcome to come. A lot of people donated for this. They donated toys, bikes, food. Absolutely. We had doctor's offices and lawyers in Vegas, and we had people out here, all the community out here, help to uh, do that. And we had independent people just come down and buy bicycles and things like that. And uh, we couldn't do it without the people. And some of them don't get to go on the run, but they, uh, they always give. How did we identify the families that we're donating to? Um, they, uh, they call into the coalition and things like that, and uh, through different uh, things that uh, Pahrump sponsors and stuff, uh, we get uh, some information from them, and the most needy we, we try to help. Do you know how many families? Um, we got uh, 22 on the run, and then uh, I do right up till Christmas, so it's probably about 60 or 70. And then uh, um, through the uh, Oasis, we do uh, people that are homeless and stuff that will be coming in and picking up boxes through the whole week. So I'd probably say maybe 200 people. Are you still in need of donations? Um, not after today. And uh, the, oh, Toys for Tots always, always helps us too. I, I want to put them in. And uh, um, just different organizations. We've had from the DA's office to just different individuals, uh, Inks, Automotive, just all, um, JMAR, all the bike uh, places here. So. Uh, I know that uh, this is really something that uh, the riders come out to support. Uh, a lot of the clubs here support this wholeheartedly. Yes, they come every year. If they don't make anything else. They make sure that they make the uh, tribe uh, uh, Christmas run. And we support each other. We go to the gents' things. We go to the Vietnam vets. They'll have their event and stuff. And so we support back and forth. The independents are a large group, too. They help us in this. And, and then uh, people just in... Uh, general you know we have cars vans everything else that go around because it's it's what the spirit of christmas is all about
Here's your entertainment this week with Zach Fuentes. I'm Zach Fuentes with your entertainment this week. You may remember a couple of months ago we told you about a stage collapsing prior to a Sugarland performance at the Indiana State Fair killing seven and injuring 58. 64 out of the 65 victims have received settlements from the state of Indiana in the amount of $5 million, which is the maximum allowed under Indiana state law. The estates of the seven who were tragically killed by the incident will receive around $300,000 each. The rest of the money, which amounts to $2.9 million, is to be divided among the 58 people who were injured. Specific amounts given are determined by the seriousness of the injury. They range from $500,000 to $109, according to Indiana Attorney General's office. One of the people who was injured at the event was offered $1,691, but did not accept. It was in turn divided up among the other victims. In addition to helping the victims with financial expenses due to the accident, the settlements also release Indiana from future liability. Also, the money from the settlement comes from state taxes. The lawsuit filed against country duo Sugarland, as well as the concert promoters and others, is still pending. Well, tell mama all I could do is cry, I'd rather go blind, and of course, at last, are songs that have become classic because of the talent of singer Etta James. Unfortunately, the 73-year-old blues legend is now in the end stages of leukemia and suffering from kidney failure and dementia. Since spring of last year, James has been under 24-hour care. Her live-in doctor has said that things are not looking good at all and asked for prayers from everyone. The children of Etta James have been in a dispute with the singer's husband of over 40 years over how her funds are to currently be dispersed towards her health care, which is costing about $30,000 a month. It was determined on Monday, however, that artist Mills, James' husband, will continue to be the conservator of her $1 million estate. A Riverside County judge has allowed for $350,000 to be released from her estate to go towards her care. It has not been determined as of yet whether James will remain at her Riverside, California home or if she will go to a hospital. We will keep you updated on her condition. Well, it appears that America's Got Talent judge Pierce Morgan will be leaving the show to focus on a CNN talk show of the same name. So taking his place will be none other than controversial radio host Howard Stern. Stern's hiring will apparently be just a small part of a complete makeover for NBC's summer reality show. Including Stern, Sharon Osbourne, and Howie Mandel, a fourth judge will be added to the judging panel. The show's executive producer and creator, Simon Cowell, is stating that Mr. Stern will not be quite as crazy and outrageous as he normally is because rules are a little different on network television. I know about that. Cowell did add, though, that he still will be controversial because he is, after all, Howard Stern. Well, on July 15th of this year, entertainers Mark Anthony and Jennifer Lopez announced that they will be divorcing after seven years of marriage. That's a record for Hollywood standards and even JLo standards. Even though they said they will no longer be married and living together, they never said they weren't ever going to work together again. Que Viva the Chosen is an upcoming Latin American talent search show that was created by Lopez, Anthony, and American Idol creator Simon Fuller. The show was developed prior to the divorce, causing many to speculate after the separation announcement whether the show would go on. Well, it is, and the couple have been working very hard on it, as was shown on a trailer released for the show just this week. Que Viva is set to premiere on January 28th on the Spanish-language station Univision after only 10 days fo following the premiere of American Idol. The show's English-language station will be announced next month. I'm Zach Fuentes, and that was your entertainment this week. And not to be confused with anything else, uh, he's still extremely hardworking. Zach's going to be right back again with a look at our weather. News 46 weather is brought to you by Healthcare Partners Medical Group with five locations in Pahrump. Local doctors and professional staff providing total care from infancy to seniors. News 46 weather is also brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. News 46 weather is also brought to you by Humana.
Welcome back to News 46, everyone. Zach Fuentes here with your weather. Once again, it was a really nice day out today. It was sunny out. Our high was at 58 degrees. It was just the right temperature, if you ask me. The winds were coming out of the west-northwest at 5 miles per hour, and our gusts right up to 9 miles per hour. The pressure was holding steady once again at 30.4, and our UV index as well is holding steady at too low. The humidity was at 33%, and our sunrise today was at 6.51 a.m., still staying the same there. And today's record was 68 degrees back in 1950. Tonight it looks like we're going to have clear skies. Our low is going to be 24, so it'll be kind of cool out there. The winds are going to come out of the north-northeast at 14 miles per hour. And our gusts are going to be at up to 27 miles per hour. Humidity is looking to be at 39%, and our sunset looks like it was at 4.33 p.m. Tonight's record was 20 degrees back in 1990. Tomorrow, it looks like we're going to have sunny skies once again. Our high is going to go down a little bit, though, at 49 degrees, and our low is going to go down at 20, almost going into the teens there. That's pretty scary. The winds are going to be coming out of the north-northeast at 14 miles per hour, and our gusts are going to be at up to 34 miles per hour, so it does look like it's going to be windy tomorrow. UV index is staying the same at too low, and our sunrise is going to be at 6.52 a.m. Humidity is at 23%. And for our seven-day forecast, it looks like Thursday, like I said, we're going to have some winds. Friday, mostly cloudy skies. Saturday and Sunday, it looks like it'll be nice and sunny. Monday, we'll go back into partly cloudy. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, it'll be sunny as well. Our highs are going to be in the 50s, except for tomorrow, where it looks like we're going to be at 49 degrees. But they are going to go back up, because you can see on Wednesday, we go back into the 60s. So remember your five P's of prompt, pets, plants, pumps, pools, and pipes. Don't forget those. And today's worst weather was in Crabapple, Pennsylvania, where it was rainy. That Thank you very much, Zach. Folks, if you have any holiday pictures that you would like to share with us, send them to news at kpvm.tv. And we wanted to give a quick shout out to the new cafe off of Highway 160, and that's what it's called, Off 160. They have great coffee, pastries, all kinds of good stuff. And it's right there where Quiznos was in that shopping center. Make sure you vi visit them. They're called Off 160. And folks, remember to call at Friends at Domino's at 751-3030 for their KPVM special, and make sure you heard it here. And I think that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. For everyone up here on the Hill of KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Prof. Good night.